Soil, a mixture of various organic matter, microbes, minerals, gases, and liquids that supports all life forms, is one of the most important resources on the planet. Soil has always been an immovable foundation for human survival. As the fundamental source of food for nearly all living organisms, soil is irreplaceable. As the world's population continues to grow, countries are met with the challenge of matching food production to population growth. But technological advancements such as genetically modified organisms, new irrigation methods, and chemical fertilizers have tremendously boosted food production. These developments, however, have also damaged the land, especially soil quality and fertility. This makes it harder to grow crops, which causes more chemical fertilizers to be used, creating a vicious cycle. We have a soil problem. We have done projects in different places of the world. To my observations, in a lot of the places, a lot of the countries, the soil quality is getting really bad. Well, the good news is that there are existing treatment methods for, that are specific to the problem, such as adding nutrients to soils that where there's been oil spill that enhance microbial degradation of oil compounds. In case of high saline and sodic soils, you can irrigate with low saline water and add organic amendments. In addition, using organic fertilizer, reintegrating carbon back into the soil, and crop rotation can help preserve soil health and productivity. But how do we know the effectiveness of these treatments? We can measure microbial activity in soil because it is a direct indicator of soil health. The more microbes, the healthier and more fertile the soil is. One way to measure activity would be to use CO2 detection tubes. Like us, bacteria need to consume nutrients to produce energy in the form of ATP through cellular respiration in which CO2 is released as a byproduct. The amount of CO2 measured is then proportional to the amount of microbial activity. However, this method is expensive, time-consuming, difficult to use over a large area, and limited by tighter soils or water saturation. Our solution to these problems is an innovative tool, the biorimeter, which measures electron flow rather than CO2. In cellular respiration, the transfer of electrons is crucial in producing ATP, or energy. The biorimeter acts as an acceptor to the electrons released in the process. The electrons can flow through the device, generating a voltage proportional to the amount of microbial activity in the soil. So my project aimed to test the biorimeter as a new method of measuring microbial activity in soil, our biorimeter is extremely durable, uh, it's less expensive, less time consuming, and easier to use over a large area compared to the CO2 detection tubes due to its unique mechanism and materials. So after a working prototype was built, it was tested in clay soil, which is the worst case scenario for measuring CO2 due to its ability to retain moisture and its compactness. So we tested under different conditions and found overall that the barometer could function in a wider variety of circumstances compared to the tubes. And although it needs further development, the barometer has promising potential for its application in the field, such as being able to determine farmland fertility or determine the influence of various fertilizers, or even to advise urban planning through helping to give a more thorough understanding of the soil. So what's really exciting about our barometer technology is its innovation that allows it to be used in extensive areas to address environmental health. Unfortunately, soil deterioration will most likely continue in the future. But soil is only one part of our environment that we need to be mindful of. If we can educate others to be mindful of our soils and the rest of the environment, and if everyone contributes just a little bit to help preserve our environment, then there is still hope for a better future for our planet and therefore a better future for humanity.